My name's Kimberly, and here's my story. I grew up in a small town and attended the local high school where I first met Jason. He was tall, charming, and always seemed to be the center of attention. We were just teenagers, but it felt like love hit me instantly. We started dating, and soon enough we couldn't bear to be apart. We got married at the age of 20. Looking back, we were young and naive, but back then it felt like living in a fairy tale. Jason was always the fun-loving, carefree type. He had big dreams and a bigger personality. I was more grounded, focused on building a stable future. We balanced each other out, or so I thought. Not long after we got married, I found out I was pregnant with our daughter, Lily. It was a surprise, but a welcome one. Jason was over the moon, and for a while it felt like we were on top of the world. We were this young couple excited about starting a family and building a life together. But as time went on, cracks started to show. Jason's carefree attitude started to feel more like irresponsibility. He was always chasing the next big thing, never satisfied with what he had. Meanwhile, I was working hard, trying to keep everything together for Lily's sake. I could see he loved her, but he was more interested in his own adventures than in being a responsible father. One evening, after putting Lily to bed, I sat down with Jason in the living room. I needed to talk to him about his spending habits and lack of focus. It was a conversation I had been dreading, but it had to be done. Jason, we need to talk. I started, trying to keep my voice calm. What's up, Kim? He asked, not taking his eyes off the TV. I'm worried about how we're handling things, I said. We need to be more responsible, especially with Lily in the picture now. Jason shook his head. You're always worrying about the future. Why can't we just enjoy the present? Because the present is a mess, Jason, I shouted back. We're barely making ends meet, and you're out there buying new gadgets and talking about trips we can't afford. A few weeks later, after another argument about his latest impulse buy, I made the decision to end our marriage. It wasn't easy, but I knew it was the right thing for Lily and me. I wanted her to have a stable, predictable life, not one filled with uncertainty and broken promises. The next few weeks were tough. Jason moved out, and I started the process of filing for divorce. He wasn't happy about it, but he eventually agreed to joint custody and to pay child support. It wasn't easy, but I felt a sense of relief, like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. Raising Lily on my own was challenging, but it was also rewarding. She was my world, and I was determined to give her the best life possible. I found a job that allowed me to provide for us, and slowly, we settled into our new routine. Over time, Jason and I found a way to be civil with each other. He would visit Lily occasionally, and he always made sure to send the child support on time. For that, I was grateful. It wasn't the life I had imagined when we first got married, but it was a life that worked for us. Lily had just turned 18, and we were celebrating her acceptance into law school. It was a big deal for both of us. She'd worked so hard, and I was incredibly proud. I decided to have a special dinner to mark the occasion, and for the first time in a long while, I invited Jason, her father, to join us. When I called him, he sounded genuinely pleased to be invited. Hey, Jason, it's Kimberly. I'm planning a dinner for Lily. She got into law school, and I thought it would be nice if you came, I said, trying to keep it casual. Kimberly, that's great news. I'll be there, he said, and we hung up. The night of the dinner, I was a bundle of nerves. I wanted everything to be perfect for Lily. I prepared her favorite dishes and set the table nicely. When Jason arrived, he looked surprisingly good, dressed in a crisp shirt and slacks, carrying a small gift. Lily came down the stairs, beaming when she saw her dad. Dad, you made it. Of course I wouldn't miss it for the world, Jason said, hugging her tightly. And I brought you a little something. Lily tore open the wrapping to find a brand new smartphone. Wow, Dad, this is amazing. Thank you, she exclaimed, her face lighting up. 
We sat down to dinner, and the conversation flowed easily. Jason talked about his new job and his big house. He seemed to be doing well, and I was glad for Lily's sake. So, Kimberly, you haven't changed a bit, Jason said, looking at me across the table. I smiled awkwardly. Thanks, Jason. You seem to be doing well. Yeah, things are good. Got a great job, nice house. Life's treating me well, he replied, clearly proud of himself. After dinner, Lily announced she was going out to celebrate with her friends. Thanks for the dinner, Mom and Dad. The phone is awesome. I'll see you both later, she said, giving us both hugs before dashing out the door. Jason and I were left alone, the house suddenly feeling very quiet. I started clearing the table, and he stood up to help. We worked in silence for a while, the familiar routine of washing and drying dishes bringing back memories of our life together. After a while, Jason broke the silence. Sure, here's your story punctuated and divided into short paragraphs with each sentence starting on a new line. My name is Kimberly, and this is my story. I grew up in a small town, went to the local high school, and that's where I met Jason. He was this tall, charming guy, always the center of attention. We were both just teenagers, but it felt like love at first sight. We started dating, and before we knew it, we were inseparable. We got married when we were just 20. Looking back, we were too young and naive, but at the time it seemed like the perfect fairy tale. Jason was always the fun-loving, carefree type. He had big dreams and a bigger personality. I was more grounded, focused on building a stable future. We balanced each other out, or so I thought. Not long after we got married, I found out I was pregnant with our daughter, Lily. It was a surprise, but a welcome one. Jason was over the moon, and for a while it felt like we were on top of the world. We were this young couple excited about starting a family and building a life together. But as time went on, cracks started to show. Jason's carefree attitude started to feel more like irresponsibility. He was always chasing the next big thing, never satisfied with what he had. Meanwhile, I was working hard, trying to keep everything together for Lily's sake. I could see he loved her, but he was more interested in his own adventures than in being a responsible father. One evening, after putting Lily to bed, I sat down with Jason in the living room. I needed to talk to him about his spending habits and lack of focus. It was a conversation I had been dreading, but it had to be done. Jason, we need to talk, I started, trying to keep my voice calm. What's up, Kim? he asked, not taking his eyes off the TV. I'm worried about how we're handling things, I said. We need to be more responsible, especially with Lily in the picture now. Jason shook his head. You're always worrying about the future. Why can't we just enjoy the present? Because the present is a mess, Jason. I shouted back. We're barely making ends meet, and you're out there buying new gadgets and talking about trips we can't afford. A few weeks later, after another argument about his latest impulse buy, I made the decision to end our marriage. It wasn't easy, but I knew it was the right thing for Lily and me. I wanted her to have a stable, predictable life, not one filled with uncertainty and broken promises. The next few weeks were tough. Jason moved out, and I started the process of filing for divorce. He wasn't happy about it, but he eventually agreed to joint custody and to pay child support. It wasn't the life I had imagined when we first got married, but it was a life that worked for us. Lily had just turned 18, and we were celebrating her acceptance into law school. It was a big deal for both of us. She'd worked so hard, and I was incredibly proud. I decided to have a special dinner to mark the occasion. For the first time in a long while, I invited Jason, her father, to join us. Hey, Jason, it's Kimberly. I'm planning a dinner for Lily. She got into law school, and I thought it would be nice if you came, I said, trying to keep it casual. Kimberly, that's great news. I'll be there, he said. 
The night of the dinner, I was a bundle of nerves. I wanted everything to be perfect for Lily. I prepared her favorite dishes and set the table nicely. When Jason arrived, he looked surprisingly good, dressed in a crisp shirt and slacks, carrying a small gift. Lily came downstairs beaming when she saw her dad. Dad, you made it, she exclaimed. Of course, I wouldn't miss it for the world, Jason said, hugging her tightly. And I brought you the little something. Lily tore open the wrapping to find a brand new smartphone. Wow, Dad, this is amazing. Thank you, she exclaimed, her face lighting up. We sat down to dinner and the conversation flowed easily. Jason talked about his new job and his big house. He seemed to be doing well, and I was glad for Lily's sake. So, Kimberly, you haven't changed a bit, Jason said, looking at me across the table. I smiled awkwardly. Thanks, Jason. You seem to be doing well. Yeah, things are good. Got a great job. Nice house. Life's treating me well, he replied clearly proud of himself. After dinner, Lily announced she was going out to celebrate with her friends. Thanks for the dinner, Mom and Dad. The phone is awesome. I'll see you both later, she said, giving us both hugs before dashing out the door. Jason and I were left alone, the house suddenly feeling very quiet. I started clearing the table and he stood up to help. We worked in silence for a while, the familiar routine of washing and drying dishes, bringing back memories of our life together. After a while, Jason broke the silence. Kimberly, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately, he said, his tone serious. What about? I asked, focused on the dishes in front of me. About us, about Lily, about everything, he replied, gently placing the dish he had been drying on the counter. I miss what we had. I miss you. I want us to give it another shot, he continued, his voice sincere. I hesitated, memories and uncertainties swirling in my mind. Jason, we've been through a lot together, not all of it good. Why now? Because I've realized what I lost. I want to be a better man for you, for Lily, he said. I took a deep breath. All right, Jason, let's take it slow see where it goes. A smile spread across his face. Thank you, Kimberly. You won't regret this. We finished the dishes in a comfortable silence, both of us lost in our thoughts. It felt strange, but also a little exciting, the possibility of starting over. As the night went on, we talked more, sharing stories and laughing about old times. Getting back with Jason was a big decision, but I decided to give it a try. We got married again, just a simple ceremony at the city hall. Only Lily and Jason's older sister, Margaret, were there. It was a small, quiet event, nothing fancy. I hoped this time things would be different. Moving into Jason's big house felt strange at first. It was so different from my small, cozy place. The house was huge, with lots of rooms and big windows, Jason seemed happy to have me there, and for a while, things felt good. I started decorating, trying to make the place feel like home. Lily came home for a visit a few days later. She was thrilled to see us together again. We sat in the living room, catching up on her life at college. So, how's law school treating you? Jason asked, looking proud. It's tough, but I love it. I'm learning so much. Lily replied, her eyes shining with excitement. I'm glad to hear that, kiddo. You're going to be a great lawyer, Jason said, patting her shoulder. Thanks, Dad. It's good to see you both together again, Lily said, looking at us with a smile. After Lily left, Jason and I sat on the couch, talking about our plans. We talked about traveling, maybe taking a trip to the mountains, it felt good to plan things together again. But as time went on, I noticed Jason wasn't putting money into our joint account. I asked him about it one night while we were having dinner. Jason, I've noticed you haven't been putting money into our account. What's going on? I asked, 
trying to keep my tone calm. He looked up from his plate, looking a bit annoyed. I've had some money problems, Kimberly. I'm working on it. Money problems? You didn't mention anything about that before. What's going on? I pressed, feeling a bit uneasy. I didn't want to worry you. It's nothing big, just a few things I need to sort out, he said, looking away. As the months went by, I noticed Jason buying new gadgets, fancy clothes, and more car rentals. I tried talking to him about it, but he always brushed me off, saying he had it under control. For two years, I tried to talk to Jason about saving money and managing our budget better. Every time I brought it up, he brushed me off, saying he had everything under control. But he didn't. Our bank account was always running low, and he kept buying new gadgets and renting flashy cars. He posted videos of himself with these expensive toys on social media, making everyone think we were living the high life. Friends would comment on how lucky I was, but they had no idea how hard it was to keep everything together. Jason's spending was getting out of hand, and I couldn't ignore it any longer. Our joint account was barely enough to cover bills, and he was flaunting new gadgets and expensive clothes. I decided to confront him seriously this time. Jason, we need to talk, I said, walking into the living room where he was lounging with his tablet. Can't it wait, Kimberly? I'm in the middle of something, he replied, not looking up. No, it can't wait. This is important, I said, my voice firm. I found another receipt for a luxury car rental. We can't keep doing this, Jason. We're running out of money. We're barely getting by, and you're spending like we're millionaires. I work hard, Kimberly. I deserve to treat myself, he said, looking annoyed. Treating yourself is one thing, but this is out of control. We're drowning here. I replied, feeling my frustration rise. Stop exaggerating. We're fine. I've got it covered, he said, dismissing my concerns. No, Jason, you don't. You're acting like a spoiled kid, not a responsible adult, I snapped. My patience wearing thin, he got up, glaring at me. I don't need a lecture from you, Kimberly. I know what I'm doing, he stormed out of the room, leaving me standing there, shaking with anger. I couldn't keep doing this. Something had to change. I kept hoping Jason would change, that he'd finally see reason and start acting more responsibly. But it only got worse. Each month I'd find more receipts for gadgets and rentals. I felt like I was drowning, trying to make ends meet while he spent money like it was going out of style. It was like he hadn't changed at all since our first breakup. The man I hoped had grown up was still the same carefree guy who didn't think about tomorrow. One day I got a call from my brother. Our mother had died. She lived in the same city where Lily was studying. The news hit me hard. I told Jason, and we decided to take the train to say goodbye. It was a long, silent journey. I was lost in my thoughts, trying to process the loss. When we arrived, Lily was there to meet us, her face pale, her eyes red from crying. We hugged tightly, finding some comfort in being together. The farewell was modest, just close family. My brother and I did what needed to be done without any fuss or luxury. It was what Mom would have wanted. During the service, I looked around and realized Jason wasn't there. I felt a pang of worry and turned to Lily. Have you seen your father? I asked trying to keep my voice steady. She shook her head, looking just as confused. No, Mom, I haven't seen him since we got here. I felt a knot in my stomach, a mix of worry and frustration. This was typical of Jason, disappearing when I needed him most, but I pushed those feelings aside, focusing on saying goodbye to my mother. Jason came up to me only after the ceremony was over, I was very tired, so I didn't ask him where he had been all this time. After the funeral, we gathered at my mother's house for the will reading. It was just me, my brother Tom, Lily, Jason, and a few close relatives. The lawyer, Mr. Harris, a longtime family friend, opened the envelope and pulled out a few sheets of paper. 
To my daughter, Kimberly, I leave the house and all its contents. Mr. Harris read aloud. To my son, Tom, I leave my savings and any remaining assets. I felt a lump in my throat. The house was a big responsibility, but I was grateful. It was full of memories, a place where I could still feel my mother's presence. I looked over at Tom, who was nodding seemingly okay with the arrangement. Suddenly, Jason, who had been silent until now, stood up. We need to sell the house. It's too much for Kimberly to handle on her own, he said, his tone more demanding than concerned. Jason, what are you talking about? We just heard the will. The house is mine, I said firmly. Exactly. It's your house. So we should sell it and split the money, Jason insisted, his face flushed with frustration. No way, Dad, Lily interjected, her voice firm. I lived here with Grandma while I was in college. I plan to keep living here. Jason waved her off. Lily, this is between the adults. Kimberly, we need to be practical about this. Practical? You're talking about selling my mother's house like it's just another asset, I said, feeling my anger rising. It is an asset, Kimberly, and as your husband, I have a say in what happens with it. Jason shot back, crossing his arms. Lily stood up, glaring at her father. Dad, I'm studying law, remember? Inherited property isn't shared between spouses. You don't get a say in this. Jason's face turned red with anger. Don't talk to me like that, young lady. This is a family decision, and I'm part of this family. Then he turned to me. If you don't sell the house, I'll divorce you. The room fell silent. All eyes were on us. I could see the shock and confusion on my relatives' faces. I took a step back, feeling a mix of anger and betrayal. Fine, Jason. We'll talk about it when we get home, I said, my voice cold and steady. We left early the next morning, taking the train back home. Jason was quiet the whole way, his anger simmering just below the surface. I pulled out my phone, scrolling through social media to distract myself. That's when I saw it, a video Jason had posted. In the video, he was standing in front of a lavish funeral setup, talking about how close he was to my mother and how much he was suffering. The comments were filled with sympathy and the video had over a million views. I felt a wave of anger and disbelief. He wasn't at my mother's funeral because he was at another funeral across the cemetery filming himself against the background of the coffin of a rich businessman. I couldn't believe how hypocritical and deceitful he was. Without looking up, I said, Jason, you're in for a surprise when we get home. He looked at me, a smug smile on his face. So you've decided to sell. Good, we'll make a nice chunk of change. I'm thinking of getting a new car with the money. I just shook my head sadly, not saying another word. The train ride felt endless, my mind racing with anger and disappointment. When we got back to Jason's house, there was a surprise waiting for him, his older sister Margaret sitting at the dining table. I had called her in advance and asked her to come over for this conversation. The moment Jason saw her, he froze, his confident demeanor vanished. Margaret, what are you doing here? Jason asked, his voice trembling a bit. Margaret looked at him sternly. I'm here because Kimberly called me. We need to have a serious talk, Jason. Sit down. Jason hesitated, then slowly walked over and sat down across from her, looking nervous. I could see the fear in his eyes. I took a deep breath, ready to lay everything out on the table. Margaret, I need to tell you what's been going on. I began my voice steady. Jason has been spending excessively on gadgets and car rentals. He's been demanding that I sell my mother's house and even threatened me with divorce if I didn't agree. Margaret's eyes narrowed as she turned to Jason. Is this true, Jason? Jason looked down, not meeting her gaze. It's not as bad as she's making it sound, Margaret. Not as bad. I snapped. You've been wasting money left and right and trying to bully me into selling my mother's house. 
That's pretty bad, Jason. Margaret shook her head, disappointment etched on her face. Jason, you haven't grown up at all. You're still acting like a child. You've never achieved anything on your own. Jason looked up, a mix of anger and shame on his face. That's not fair, Margaret. I tried my best. Your best? Margaret scoffed. The house you're living in isn't even yours, it's mine. I let you live here because I felt sorry for you, and now I find out you've been wasting money and bullying Kimberly. Jason's face turned pale. Margaret, I didn't mean for things to get out of hand, Jason pleaded. Out of hand, Margaret repeated, her voice cold. You've been living off my generosity and trying to push Kimberly around, and do you know what else? I've been paying Lily's child support, not you. You couldn't even be bothered to take care of your own daughter. You should be grateful to God for having a wife like Kimberly. You don't deserve her. I felt tears welling up in my eyes at Margaret's words. I turned to Jason, my voice trembling with emotion. Jason, the house should go to Lily. She's an adult now, and it's her legacy. Jason suddenly jumped up, his face red with anger. I don't give a damn about Lily. I want half the money from the sale of that house, or else I want a divorce. The room fell silent. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I took a deep breath. Fine, Jason, I said, trying to keep my composure. You don't care about your own daughter. Fine, Jason. I reached into my bag and pulled out the divorce papers I had prepared earlier. I handed them to him, my hand shaking. Here are the divorce papers. Sign them. Jason's hands trembled as he reluctantly signed the papers. You're making a big mistake, Kimberly. No, Jason. The mistake was thinking you'd ever change, I said, feeling a strange sense of relief wash over me. Jason finished signing and then bolted out of the house, slamming the door behind him. I stood there, feeling a mix of exhaustion and liberation. Margaret walked over to me, placing a comforting hand on my shoulder. Kimberly, thank you for everything you've done for my brother. And you've got Lily. You'll get through this. After the divorce, I packed up and moved back to the city where I grew up. It felt good to be back in my mother's house, surrounded by familiar memories. The house needed some work, but it was home. It was a place where I could start fresh. Lily graduated from college not long after. She married a wonderful guy and now she's expecting a baby. I'm excited to become a grandmother. Life was starting to feel settled and peaceful, something I hadn't felt in a long time. One afternoon, I was in the garden pulling weeds when my phone rang. I wiped my hands on my jeans and answered it, seeing Jason's name on the screen. Hello, I said, already feeling a knot in my stomach. Kimberly, it's Jason. I need to talk to you, he said, his voice sounding desperate. What do you want, Jason? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. I'm in big trouble, Kimberly. I've got debts piling up and I need your help, he blurted out. No, Jason, I'm not giving you any money, I said firmly. But Kimberly, I need you. We could try again, you know. Make things right this time, he said, his voice almost begging. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. You want to get married again? Are you out of your mind? Come on, Kimberly. We had good times, too. We can start over, he said trying to sound convincing. Jason, we're done. I've moved on and you need to do the same. I'm not marrying you again and I'm definitely not giving you money. I said, feeling my anger rise. He sighed heavily on the other end of the line. I thought you'd understand. I thought you'd want to help me. I've helped you enough, Jason. It's time you stand on your own two feet, I replied, my voice cold. Fine, Kimberly. I see how it is, he said, his voice turning bitter. Goodbye, Jason, I said and hung up the phone. I paused, a rush of emotions washing over me. Relief mingled with a touch of sadness. That chapter of my life was finally closed, once and for all. 
Jason's struggles were no longer mine to carry, and I felt a burden lift from my shoulders. Returning to my gardening, a sense of calm settled within me deeper than I'd felt in years. Now I could turn my attention to the future, my daughter, and the excitement of a new grandchild on the horizon. I was done looking back. It was time to embrace the life ahead of me with all its possibilities.